Hey, hey, math people. Solving quadratics. This is a fun unit in Algebra 2, or Honors Algebra 1, wherever you may be. There's a lot of different methods for solving quadratics. It can get very cumbersome. Uh, graphing can be a little annoying, right? Because if you don't have a graphing calculator, you got to go through this whole process. Square root method is nice, but it's really... Uh, not perfect because there are many situations where it doesn't work. Same thing with factoring. If you're good at factoring, great, you always want to do it, but it doesn't always work. Uh, completing the square is a bit of a process, but it's a little bit better and more reliable than the previous two. In quadratic formula, that's a super process, but it's the most reliable of them all. So let's just kind of do a rundown. Which of these? So here are some quadratics. I already set them all to zero. For quadratics, always set them to zero uh, and then solve except for square root method, uh, and then we will talk about which of, these, which of these methods work for these kind of setups in quadratics, okay? So starting with the first one, x squared minus 4 is equal to 0. Uh, what actually works? So graphing works here. If you were to graph this, uh, it's just a parabola shifted down 4 units. You would look to see when you cross the x-axis, it's going to be at 2 and negative 2. Graphing works. If you attempted to do the square root method, move the 4 onto the other side. Square root method only works when you have no linear term. So the moment you have this guy, square root method is out the door. Uh, so we get x is equal to plus or minus 2. Same thing over there. So it works with this one. Factoring. Sometimes. Uh, so not always. Uh, here, this is a factorable expression. If this was like a minus 5, it wouldn't work. Uh, but it sometimes works. Uh, we can factor this into x plus 2, x minus 2, that's difference of two squares, and then set these both to 0. And it, it did work here, sometimes not always, but we'll, we'll put it down. Uh, completing the square, no linear term, so not going to work there. And quadratic formula actually does work. You can say this is the same thing as x squared uh, plus 0x minus 4 is equal to 0. You can find your a, find your b, find your c, and quadratic formula will work here. Actually, completing the square will work too. You would just have to play around with uh, like 0x. You'd have to cut the 0 in half and square it. Uh, I, I wouldn't advise that. Uh, so maybe, maybe we'll do this in my little legend. We'll do should do, and we'll do can work. Yeah, we'll do that. So when you have Okay, there we go. When you have a a lack of linear term, what you should do, you should probably do the square root method. This is the winner here. Uh, so actually I'll I'll do it underneath. I'll say x squared minus some sort of number. You should do the square root method. Uh, but this can work, this can work, this can work, and this can work. All of them work. You should probably do square root method when you have something like this, though. Looking at the blue case, when you have a trinomial that's specifically factorable, what two numbers multiply into 6 and add into 5? 3 and 2. So, you would end up getting negative 3 and negative 2. When you have this linear term inside, and it happens to be a factorable expression, you should factor. Factoring's the winner here. Now, graphing does work. You can graph this thing. You'll end up getting a parabola that looks roughly like this. And it, it does work. So, graphing works. Uh, square root method does not work. I have this linear term here. If you attempted to take the square root, you end up getting the square root of a of a linear term, and, and that's just not something you, you want to play around with. So square root method does not work. Uh, completing the square, you, you really shouldn't do that uh, because it's already factorable, but you can do it. It would be converting it into vertex form of a quadratic. It works. So the process of completing the square, you move the 6 over to the right, so it would be x squared plus 5x is equal to negative 6. You take this 5, cut it in half, and square it, so it would be x squared plus 5x plus 
uh, 25 over 4, and you would add that to both sides. Not a pretty number because it's not even. Uh, inside here, this would be x plus 5 over 2, all squared, is equal to whatever this expression is. And then you can take the square root of both sides. It does work. Uh, probably not the suggested route, but it does work because factoring is just so much faster. Uh, and quadratic formula always works. A is 1, B is 5, C is 6. So quadratic formula is always going to work here. Uh, okay, looking at C, what two numbers multiply into 5, add into 5? That's not factorable. So when you have a, uh, when you have a trinomial here that isn't factorable, obviously factor, factoring is not going to be your guy to work with here. Uh, graphing does work. If you attempted to graph this one, Uh, you would get something pretty similar to this, it's just shifted down one unit. And it's going to be really weird decimal answers. So graphing technically works, but you're going to get weird decimal answers off your graph. Your teacher might want, might want you to have like a radical answer, in which case graphing's not going to work in that case. It works, it just, it's a matter of whether or not your teacher's okay with a decimal answer versus a, a, a radical answer. Uh, so that's kind of contingent there. Square root method will not work uh, for something like this, so I would not use that. Completing the square does work. It's the same process here. I just almost never recommend completing the square because a lot of people do mess up on that one a lot. Uh, but completing the square, totally viable. Actually, yeah, in, in terms of C, I would almost say whatever you're more comfortable with between completing the square and quadratic formula. Because a lot of people mess up the qu completing the square, but it's a lot faster, in my opinion. So for me, I would probably do this by completing the square, but for you, if you've just done so much quadratic formula, then you, know, then you can do quadratic formula for that one. So for this, I would say, okay, when it's not factorable, and it's a trinomial, graphing works only if teacher is okay. If teach is okay with decimals. Square root method does not work. Factoring does not work. Completing the square does work. Quadratic formula, A is equal to 1, B is equal to 5, C is equal to 5. Quadratic formula does work. So whichever is your favorite amongst those two. This guy right here, 2x squared minus 3x plus 4. If you attempted to graph this one, you would end up getting something like this. It's a parabola that doesn't touch the x-axis. So because of that, graphing will not work when you have imaginary solutions. You don't have any real solutions. They don't touch the x-axis. Square root method will also not work because you have a linear term. Factoring will not work because this is not a factorable expression. Completing the square will work. Um, it's just you, you will have to play around with imaginary numbers. And quadratic formula will also work as well. Uh, it's just a matter of picking your favorite amongst these two. So if I wanted to turn through a uh, quadratic formula with this guy, I guess I can. I'll get a is equal to 2, b is equal to negative 3, c is equal to 4. Uh, it's negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. So I'll get 3 plus or minus uh, negative 3 squared is 9. Please don't write negative 9 there. Minus 4 times 2 times 4 all over 2 times 2, which is 4. You get 3 plus or minus, oof, what is that? That is 16 times 2, which is 32. 9 minus 32, ah, uh, what is 9 minus 32? So 10 minus 32 is negative 22. So this is one lower, so negative 23. Big brain that. So you end up getting negative 23 underneath the radical over 4. This is the same thing as 3 plus or minus i root 23 over 4. Uh, so when it's imaginary, again, pick your favorite between completing the square and quadratic formula. In summary, no linear term. Square root is your guy. Factorable quadratic. Save yourself the headache, uh, use factoring. 
non-factorable three terms quadratic, uh, your favorite between completing the square and quadratic formula. And uh, when it's a uh, non-factorable and there's no real zeros, same thing, completing the square quadratic formula. If you happen to take, if you happen to be taking a um, a quadratic test with calculator, though, I mean, come on here, these three can all be solved by calculator. You can just tell your calculator to do all the work for you. So this is kind of contingent on it being a calculator-based assessment. If not, you know, follow the stars. Please continue to math on. I will do the same. I'll see you in the next video.